Incentive plans. What are these? Let's understand that. So far, we have understood how to calculate your gross pay. And in that, we have understood how to calculate basic pay and also overtime pay. Basic pay is, some, is uh, something that you have promised with your employees that you would be paying irrespective of um, anything like any um, it is not connected with the time or um, or the work done it is we can say that it is more of a promised wage that you would be paying to him for the for the hours he has attended the production process okay whereas overtime pay is the pay that is um, kind of a compensation to an employee for the time he has worked more or above than the agreed time in a particular day. As the name is suggesting, incentive wages or incentive wage payment plans are introduced in an organization to share the benefits with the employees of any increased profits or output so that they are more motivated. The actual reason or the purpose of introducing the incentive plans is to reduce your cost per unit. And how is that done? When we calculate the labor cost irrespective of the direct or indirect labor we have two kinds of costs one that is fixed in nature and the other one is the variable okay now when you offer an incentive scheme that will definitely push the wage per unit or wage per hour of the employee okay but this will be affecting only the variable portion of the vari uh, labor cost the fixed portion of the labor cost will stay the same it's not going to change now because of that increased wages employees will be happy and possibly the efficiency and effectiveness of the labor will increase and that will cause increased production and because of the increased production we can also say that economies of scale will be enjoyed by the entity so with more units produced definitely variable cost will be increasing and it will be increasing proportionately with the number of units produced however your fixed cost is not going to change okay so because of that your total labor cost will reduce per unit total cost per unit total labor cost per unit will be reducing because of the incentive wage plans now we have different remuneration methods or different methods to implement that will provide incentives to the employees for the increased efficiency or effectiveness now from the examination point of view what we have to observe or what we, we will be expected from an examiner we will be given a question or a scenario which uh, will be telling you that okay this is the current state this is the wage we are paying to an employee at the moment and we have a proposal given by a supervisor or someone and according to the incentive plan we are expecting this much increase in the efficiency or production or productivity or whatever and in that situation you will have to calculate the profitability before introducing incentive scheme and after introducing the proposed incentive schemes and then you will be deciding whether it is fruitful for us to introduce the incentive scheme or not because you know if you are going to pay extra to an employee and you're not getting anything extra out of it 
and more than that you are not getting extra which is or you are not getting the benefit which is more than the cost you are paying extra it's of no use okay it will be giving you no good so again the basic reason behind introducing incentive scheme is that if you are going to bear extra burden of labor cost you should be getting extra benefits out of it as well and we will always try to get m benefits more than the expenses that you are going to pay as part of an incentive scheme okay now when we talk about incentive schemes we have two kinds of incentive schemes that we can introduce one is the individual incentive scheme and the other one is the group incentive scheme if you are able to measure the performance of each of the employees individually then you can introduce individual incentive scheme that only that person will be getting the increased wage rate or um, appreciation of some kind but in most of the situation you are unable to calculate the performance of each individual because many times individuals are working as, as part of a team so whole team will be performing the effort of every individual depends on the effort of the others so in that case you cannot introduce individual incentive scheme and in that case you have to have group incentive scheme in place now according to our syllabus we have to calculate the incentive wages or bonus like if we have an individual bonus or individual incentive scheme going on then how to calculate in that situation or if the group incentive scheme is in place then how are we going to calculate the wages of employees in that system this will be looking in few minutes okay but if we classify the incentive schemes then we can classify incentive schemes in two ways I mean how the benefits are shared with the employees if we try to classify the incentive schemes on, on, on the basis we share the benefits with employees then we can share the benefits or we can provide incentive on the basis of results or we can also provide benefits on the basis of the work done you might be thinking that it's kind of the same that if I say the result of work done well in many situations yes it is the same but here what we are trying to say that result actually translates into time saved okay and in here what we are talking is the number of units produced 